we will see in the future. Thank you. Mr. Portin. Um, well, I believe that the, the state report card is absolutely relevant. Whether it's always accurate or not is, is potentially questionable. Um, and in which areas. I believe that it's, it really is imperative that we understand each of the categories and the details um, of the state report card and, and what they mean for Loveland um, so we can take corrective action as needed. Um, I think that there are places probably where we see an overall grade, because it's nice to pull everything into overall grades, but if you look at details, there, there are some grades where a B is probably a terrible grade, and a D might be significant improvement, and based on how the score, the, the test changed, or the scoring of the test, the baseline may have raised from a 75 to an 80 from year to year, and where in one year you were passing, the next year you are failing, even though you improved. Those are things that we really need to understand, and it's very important that we do understand those and that we communicate what that means to the community because it is relevant. People look at it. People say, look at our score versus King versus Mason versus whatever. And if all we can say is generically, yeah, but it doesn't always really matter or we're improving it, we need to understand the details um, of what that is and really put that into part of our actual plan of how we're going to address those things. Um, I hope that over time some of the things that have changed in the report card and, and with testing um, are baseline better and we get more consistent uh, reports and grades out of that, but yes, it's absolutely relevant. Thank you. Mrs. Washington. Thank you. Um, I do agree that the report card is relevant and it is an invaluable tool that the school district can use to learn where the opportunities for growth and improvement lie. I think that it is something that is oftentimes misunderstood by the public. So I agree with Mr. Fortune that we do really need to examine the report card and then work on educating the public as to what it means and the steps that the school board is taking to improve in each of those areas. How are we going to bring it up next time? What are we doing behind the scenes to work with the teachers, to work with the students, to get them to a report card that I think Loveland parents and community members are used to seeing, not what the past report card reflected. So I do agree that it is relevant. It is a good tool. It is something that we should use to look at areas of improvement, and we should use it to drive the direction that we're going. We need to go in. Thank you. Yes, and so uh, um, there will be two minutes now for each person to uh, uh, have a conclusion. And we'll start with uh, Mr. Fortune. So thank you all again for hosting this. Thank everyone here for, for being here, and those watching for watching. Uh, it's very important uh, to get this message out. You've heard a lot of discussion tonight. And again, I don't claim to be an expert on the details of anything yet. Um, but I, I do promise that I will be an engaged and involved board member. Um, one who believes in and will promote a culture of high expectations and high achievement and high supports for children. And I also believe in data-driven decision-making and clear communication and participation with the community. If you believe after this that, that my voice through my experience and background can add value to the district uh, in its future direction, I simply ask that you cast one of your available three votes for me. Um, but really, whether you choose to vote for me or not, I encourage everyone who's here tonight, who's watching online, who, or who isn't here tonight, after tonight, stay engaged in the process of participating in the growth of our schools. Attend board meetings, stay informed, stay involved. Uh, our schools are really too important for parents and community members not to be involved. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Mrs. Washburn. 
Thank you. Um, thank you to everybody for coming out tonight. I really do hope that I have the opportunity to represent Loveland because as I said, I am a parent to young children in the district. As a teacher, I think that I have something to offer to the community. In that way, I believe that I'll look at things in a different way, maybe than other school board members. Um, as I said before, I am good at compromising. I would just like to have the opportunity to represent Loveland, to earn your trust, to speak on behalf of the people in Loveland, the students, the teachers, the community members, and I ask for your vote on November 7th and for your support. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Pettit. Well, thanks everyone for staying. I, I um, just from meetings, we get people and then they leave. So I just thank everyone for staying. It, it's much appreciated. And I just want to say, if, if the voters decide to keep me on for the next four years, my priorities are to continue three, con three key concepts that we have already begun. First and foremost, the selection of a new permanent superintendent. This is my top priority as it can influence all other concerns we have. We have been blessed to have Mr. Chad Hilliker for a few years, and he will be sorely missed in the public. Our next one needs to be simply dedicated to our children and community. While it is a pressing issue, the public has asked us to take our time and not rush to a decision. This is a charge that I intend to keep for the sake of the community. Second, want to, I want to help steer our academic programs so they align from one grade level to the next. What a student learns in the second grade should directly lead to what they learn in the third, with little redundancy. To me, this is a common sense measure to help streamline our academics. And lastly, I want to stay on, um, stay on to help our state report card improve. We already have great schools and are making significant strides, but we can never cease improving as the future of our community and nation are involved. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to everyone for coming. Thank you so much to our candidates and viewers at home and folks that are um, sitting in the audience tonight. Um, as they stated earlier, there are three seats available and we have four candidates. Uh, Mr. Bloomberg couldn't be here, obviously Ms. Washburn, Mr. Portune, and Ms. Pettit. Um, thank you so much for coming forward. I know it's not an easy task for you or your families. Um, not only to be here tonight, but actually to run for school board as a candidate. And we're very appreciative to, to each of you for that. Um, thank you, Ms. McClanahan. If we could give each of the, the candidates and Ms. McClanahan a round of applause. <laughs> Tomorrow we have the Loveland um, um, City Council, excuse me, City Council Loveland uh, candidate forum. Same place at 7 p.m and um, you can come submit some questions. And uh, that will go a little bit longer because we have about three times as many candidates. So um, seven o'clock right here. We're actually not in the middle school media center, which is right adjacent to us. We're in the intermediate school media center. So um, same door, you can come through. And 7 p.m. right here. On behalf of Loveland Magazine and the Little Miami River Chamber Alliance, thank you all for joining us. And we'll see you back tomorrow. Good night.